and welcome to another episode of the Play Ultra Podcast. This is episode one two six. Yeah. Yeah. As usual, as the three of us, we're back. Uh, we did an episode last week, right? So we didn't we skip did. one week. We did not skip a week. <laughs> yes. So yeah. We did it. How are your weeks? Slow. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> why? Why does work suck, guys? I did watch uh, my um, friend play through more of Final Fantasy VIII. Um, I don't know why I'm going to keep talking about it because uh, that's an old game and most people have already played it. But yeah, uh, it's uh, it's still kicking and uh, story is still really weird. And that's just <laughs> how Final Fantasy games go. <laughs> A bit I love it. Extra weird with Final Fantasy VIII. Yeah. Yeah, there's a there's a moment I was warned was called the jump the shark moment, um, meaning it's basically the moment where everyone kind of goes, wait, what now? And so we already passed that moment. So I had my what Is it now? The orphanage one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I was like, what? And I love their explanation of why you know memories. Mm. Um, which is especially hilarious because uh, my friend is doing the don't level up at all playthrough, mm. Mm. and so it's extra funny because she's not using any GFs. This doesn't make a lot of sense, but that's okay. Anyway, um, but yeah, so we're past that, and uh, we went to space. That was cool. And now things are trying to be explodey. So yeah, tune mm. in for next time for Sarah, who's never played Final Fantasy VIII, reacting to a very old game. That people already know. Okay, that's it. <laughs> I played uh, more Assassin's Creed, but I'm, I'm also playing Castlevania's Night Symphony of the Night. Oh, cool! Yeah, I got it for the Vita, which oh, yeah, PlayStation One classic that you can play on the Vita. Okay. Oh, it's okay, cool. Cool, cool. But I'm having the Metroidvania issue of like, where the fuck do I go now? Oh no! <laughs> yeah, so I'm just like wandering around the fucking map. Yeah, and because that's definitely something I appreciate about Nier. It doesn't have that problem. Mm. And because I like you know, I discovered quite a bit of the map already. And if I go tr- through a walkthrough now, I have to read like the fucking entire walkthrough to see where I am. So yeah, it's just annoying, but it's fun. It's quite challenging. It's fun. That's all I did. <laughs> Is that a three D one? Oh no, it's two D. Okay. Uh, 2D is there use there the, is a uh, 3D Castlevania, yeah. right? That exists? Okay. That exists. Uh, there was also a PlayStation 3 game of the Castlevania that was really bad. So there is two 3D ones. I think one is for the PS2. That one's the really bad one. And <laughs> the PlayStation 3 one, there's, a, there's, a, there's two games. Uh, the first game and the sequel. And that one's like a God of War ish clone. Yes. And it's more yes. like a reboot. And they kind of yes. turn the story on its head, kind of thing. Yes. Hmm. That's right. And it's available on Steam. Yeah, I only know about because, yeah, my brother did buy one of them. I don't know if he got the sequel or the first one or whatever. I think because he got it at a garage sale, so I don't remember which one. But, um, yeah, it it's very different. Like you mm. said, God of War-esque is definitely the yeah. best way to describe it. Because it, my familiarity with um, Castlevania is very small. I, I do remember it, how when it was in the, you know, <laughs> back of Nintendo. But um, I remember just watching going, is this God of War? Not God of War. Yeah, is this God of War? Because <laughs> this is not... This is not Castlevania. Also, the, the whoever it was, the char- the main character is really strange to me. I forget why. I found him weird. Is he, like, super young or something? I don't remember. I'm not sure. The annoying thing know. is, the um, if you got the game on the PS3 early, that means you had to get, like, DLC and shit. And the DLC had a really important... St- the story doesn't make sense without the DLC. Oh, why? No, that's... Yeah, that's so bad. it's really annoying. I kind of find out, I found out about it after finishing the main game because I didn't play any of the DLCs because I thought, you know, it's just extra stuff, right? And didn't right. really want to play extra stuff. But nope, it's pretty important to the story. Oh, good job, guys. It kind of explained the ending of the base oh. game. <laughs> oh, great. Konami, Man, fuck you. Why? why? Just why? Yeah. Man, I'm just waiting for us to find just for that to just be a norm with video games. I hope it isn't, but I'm just waiting for that to be a thing where it's like to get the under better understanding of the ending, get this DLC. Why? 
Yeah. So, Fo, what did you do? Save, save um, the podcast with your <laughs> doings. Uh, so I finished uh, Doki Doki. I oh, played it okay. for like a lot earlier in the week, which meant I. Do you I agree recorded. with uh, everybody else saying it's the best game ever made? Do people actually say no, that? No, I don't think so. I don't okay. think so. <laughs> I won't be surprised if they do. I'm it's sure somebody It's probably yeah. one of the best free games I've I ever played. I feel is the new Undertale. Maybe. It doesn't have the same know. fan base, but it does have the same, like, you know, meta. Meta like, kind of stuff? It definitely has the same meta stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay. And even the I same, should... like, file modifying stuff. Mm. Oh, I should oh, really? play it then. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll have to play this. <laughs> Apparently, so, um, have you heard of a YouTube channel called The Game Theorist? Yes. Yeah, yes. it's MatPat, right? I have no idea. My coworker was talking about it, mm. and he was saying he watched a Game Theorist who has two videos on Doki Doki, because apparently it's actually a, um, like, a viral marketing game for a completely different game. Like, all of mm. the characters in Doki Doki are actually from this other game. Hmm. Huh. I haven't watched weird. it, so I don't know what. But that's super weird because if you hadn't told me that, I would have had no idea. Mm. So I don't know if the viral marketing was as, as a marketing device. Mm. How long is Doki Doki? Um, let's see. How long did I play it for? According to Steam, I was playing it for no, not installed games. God dang it! I uninstalled <laughs> it, so it's not in my. It's free. So it disappears from my library when you uninstall it. Will oh. it actually still show me how much I played it, it for? Should. Um, three point five hours, six point five hours total. Oh, it's really short then. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, like, and if you're reading it, if you're not reading it out loud, it's gonna be much faster. Yeah. Um, there is probably some replay value to it. Okay. But uh, I'm not gonna do that because I don't think it's a ton of extra value. Just some extra side like story things hmm. maybe. Um. So I played that. Uh, I played more Nier Automata. I just got back to the forest again, part two. So now I know that the forest king is in a baby, which is good to know because that baby got kidnapped by A2 in the previous playthrough. We never saw any of that again. It seems like a weird little uh, story arc that went nowhere. So I'm really hoping it goes somewhere this time. Which reminds me, I saw a movie I think I mentioned last week called Three Billboards in Front of Ebbing, Missouri. Mm. That's the full movie name. I watched it. And it's very, very good, but it does do that thing that indie films like to do a lot, where there's no, like, traditional closure at all. Uh. You just kind of just, it's like, the movie's like, it's about two hours, and we're going to end here. It's like, but, but, there's so many other things that could happen, and people could talk, and, <laughs> but nope. It's like, okay. Okay. I guess to look for meaning. Make me work for appreciation. Just, just feed it to me. Just tell me what, the, what I'm supposed to think. That's what I like from my movies. I <laughs> don't want to think. <laughs> Uh, but it was very good. I kind of wish I hadn't seen the trailer for it, though, because the trailer makes it look like it's a lot funnier. Oh. And it's definitely very dark. Um, really? There's a very prominent... I can't say anything. Never can say anything. Yeah. There's, it's, it, it's, a, it's, it's dark, not in the sense that it's... It doesn't, like, it doesn't like shove sadness on you, but mm-hmm. it's... Um, the subject matter? I guess kind of gritty. Like... Uh. Um, a lot of people get hurt, I guess. Mm. Sam Rockwell is really racist, isn't right? <laughs> Sam Rockwell is very racist. You don't see this on camera, but he apparently tortures a black guy. because He's a cop, so he uh, does that sort of thing, mm. apparently. Oh, great. Yep. Fantastic. But his character is actually the most interesting, I think. My favorite line, though, is my, one of my favorite jokes, is um, there's this guy who's dating a really young girl, and she's kind of like... Um, I don't know, it's kind of ditzy, I guess, is a, for lack of a better word. Um, and so he's talking to somebody else. He's like, you know what she said to me the other day? She said to me, anger begets violence. Or something like that. And the response is like, she said begets? He's like, shut up! <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I just love that response. It's like, Did she really say that? <laughs> oh, jeez. So I definitely recommend that movie, but uh, it won't make you feel good. Mm. Definitely no happiness, but the really. Trailer so funny though. Yeah, well, there's laughs in the movie. It's interesting to see what pe- what parts different people laugh at. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> there's a social <laughs> experiment some there. people are laughing at the racist parts or something. Oh. Um, I mean, with Get I Out, think that's a yes. maybe. <laughs> the fact that not Get the, Out, like, I mean, because the racist parts are still like they're not. 
they're still kind of funny. Like there's mm. a there's a part where she calls him. Like I can't I can't use the same you know n words that they use in this movie, but um, it's like, you're an n word torturer. It's like hey, it's African American torturer. You gotta be completely correct now. <laughs> you're just like oh defending my himself. It's like no, you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Darn it. <laughs> Darn it. Oh great. Um, so that was pretty much my week. I feel like I did some other things. Oh, I tried to watch uh, Food Wars. I watched the pilot. Oh, and oh I was like, gosh. I, I've seen enough. <laughs> I watched one episode. I don't, I which, don't intend to watch anymore. Which, uh, which part, which part finally did it for you? <laughs> which when part all did you go? All clothes blew off. Yeah. Like, it was already, yeah. it's already borderline softcorn porn. And then it pretty much yeah. just, it's like, just, I'll just watch porn if I want to. Like, what's <laughs> yeah. the point of this? <laughs> <laughs> the food, the food, foe. Uh, it's about the food. I mean. No. Even, yeah, I no, can that's... see if I, I if I watched more, I can conceive of it having like, oh, the other competitor cooks. It's gonna be really interesting. But like, yeah. even the end of the first episode, where it's showing that one teacher being super rude. I'm like, this. I don't know. I'll go. I'll read Harry Potter, and then <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, just, yeah. No, no, no it's like. totally fair. Yeah, you would on, honestly, if you're interested in cooking, it's not it, it between all the yeah the etchy. It's got some interesting advice. My brothers even used some of the mm. advice that they've used in an episode before. It's so it's cool stuff that way. But yeah, no, I don't blame you. I remember when I saw that part at first. I was like, why? And if you can't get past that, I, I have bad news for you. Don't watch it's the not, rest of it. <laughs> it's not that it bothers me or anything. It just it's wasn't just, like I've seen better, like mm. uh, funny, etchy, like in um, mm. High School of the Dead. Or mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't know. It just, it just wasn't it didn't stand out to me as being unique i guess i I could watch more but i'd rather watch a different anime i'm like i'm in the market right now for a good anime Mm. that just wasn't wasn't no i would maybe give it like one more episode just to make sure if you really want to yeah because the school is the main crux of the whole thing right i really should watch the school yeah because the first pile episode is kind of weird but like i don't blame you i yeah yeah (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah Um, oh food wars (laughs) Oh. <laughs> Black Panther is out, right? It not out is it yet. Out? No, it's not. Oh, it's oh, not okay. out till it's the 16th for us. Here. Okay. I do want to see it. Also, did you know John Cena is voice acting in a movie right now called Ferdinand? What? Ferdinand is the bull. Ferdinand is the bull from like Bugs Bunny cartoons. Bugs Bunny is not in this movie, as far as I know. But it focuses on the bull. And it's like, it's like, don't judge a bull by the cover. Because he doesn't want to be a, a fighting bull, but they make him go in the ring and fight because he's a big bull. It's not not in, it's not it's gotten Bugs great Bunny? reviews. I yeah. thought yeah, so. Yeah, I think it's a Bugs Bunny character. I'm pretty sure it's from it's, like old uh, Warner Bros. cartoons. It's a film based on Monroe Leaf and Robert Lawson's children's book, The Story of Ferdinand. Oh, I could be completely wrong then. But the way the bull is animated looks exactly like... I'm going to find a picture now. Mm. Yeah, if I just go Google Bugs Bunny Bull. And he's yes. the main character? Just Google Bugs Bunny Bull. And it looks exactly the same. I guess I'm not sure how much variance you can put into a bull. But yes, he is the, he is the main character of the movie, Ferdinand. So he's the bull? Yes. Ah. He is the bull. John Cena is the bull. I don't know who else was in the movie. But the trailer wasn't great. Although the trailer, I actually watched Paddington 1 for the first time recently. Peyton Manning is in the movie. What the fuck? Oh, yeah. Peyton, I recognized his voice. Okay. It's got a rude cast. It's got Kate McKinnon. I remember that. And David Tennant. David Tennant. I didn't see that. Is Anthony Anderson? I don't know Anthony Anderson. Uh, you'll, you'll know if you see his face. Anthony. Peyton Manning is doing shit now. Oh yeah, I yeah. do know his face. Interesting. Hmm. Did you say you um, saw Paddington yeah, so One? Is that what you said? I did see. So I saw Paddington. So I was, I was drawing a line between <clears throat> Paddington and Ferdinand because mm-hmm. uh, I remember when, when the very first time I saw the Paddington One trailer, and it was one of the worst trailers I've ever seen. Like, I mean, yes, it, it was, was bad in the sense that it clearly was a movie not for me. It was like a movie for children because the whole yeah. the whole trailer was basically Paddington like putting toothbrushes in his ears and just really gross slapstick, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Um, but I saw the movie and it was actually a lot better than that. It wasn't great, but it was not as bad as the trailer made it seem. And I feel like Ferdinand gave me the same kind of vibe. It didn't look horrible, but from the trailer, I'm like, this is 
not for me as well. Yeah. Same targeting a much lower age range, I think, and it's humor, which is. I heard Paddington fair. Two was very good, but I don't know. I never really grew up with Paddington, so I don't have. But yeah, I totally agree with you because I, I remember well. seeing the Paddington One trailer and I was like, I have no interest in this movie. This just yeah, gives me horrible. a lot of Ajita. Just gives me so much Ajita <laughs> right now. Like, ugh, ugh. <laughs> Why are you destroying the bathroom? <laughs> Stop it. Yeah. It's just like, it's like Mr. Popper's Penguins kind of thing where it's yeah. like, kids love hijinks in the bathroom. It's like, that's probably true. I'm not a kid. Yeah, I'm not a kid. And all I can think about is how it's all ruined. <laughs> ruined it, Paddington. The best part is like in the books, Paddington's always known for giving things a hard stare. And mm -hmm. that scene in the movie is the best scene by far. Like, I guess I was kind of like multitasking. And I just look mm -hmm. up. I just see Paddington like glaring and like, is he going berserk? Is he gonna like kill that guy? Like, is he gonna be like a feral bear? And I, was, I was really, in, I was really like, like on the edge of my seat for a minute. It's like, oh, that's cool. It's, it's well done. <laughs> oh no. Uh. Um, and I guess to end my week because I played Doki Doki so much in the beginning, that meant I didn't have to spend as much time recording. So I just wasted all my time playing Eternal Card Game and Warframe. <laughs> of course. Of course. Are you gonna get. Final Fantasy XII on PC. I hadn't been following that. Which one is twelve? Isn't that an online one? No, that's eleven. No, eleven. 11. Final 11. Fantasy XII got remastered and came out for the PS4. Well, more like a re. It's more than just a HD remaster. Like they remastered a few other things. They came out for the PS4 and then now it just released on the PC. Hmm. It's currently twenty percent off for forty dollars. Hmm, <laughs> it's a little much. Mm. It, it does look actually pretty good though. Looking at it right now, it has a job system and it is based in Ivalice, which is the world in Final Fantasy Tactics. If it was for the Switch, I'd much stronger consider it. Mm. Like I don't it's remember the last JRPG, like long big JRPG I played on a PC. Like I really like my JRPGs to be portable for some reason. Just like, <laughs> like, oh, grind for a few minutes here, grind for a few minutes there, mm -hmm. multitask while watching TV or whatever. Maybe the solution is to make them less grindy so I don't have to do that. <laughs> now I'm kind of like torn. I'm not sure if I want to get it for the PS4 or the PC. <laughs> have you ever tried doing an LP of a JRPG? No, I haven't. I never know what to talk about during combat. See, if it was me, I would just do those off camera. <laughs> It's a lot of editing, but probably the way to go if you're one person. If you have two people, you can talk during it, which is right. fine, but one yeah. person is way hard, at least for me. Yes, it's true. Uh, oh, yeah. I think that's everything I did. I didn't watch anything else cool. I'm I'm actually... Uh, Lady Hamner, has, she only read the first couple Harry Potter books, mm -hmm. and she didn't even watch all the movies, mm -hmm. so we're working our way through the audiobooks now. I mean, finished the first one, and so it's really funny to be like, she's like, Snape wasn't the bad guy? It was Quirrell the whole time? Like, <laughs> that's yep. so cute! <laughs> oh, it's so precious! <laughs> I love it. I love it. And then, and then we watched the first movie, and she's like, now I feel like one of those people is like, that's not like the book! I'm like, yep, they changed things, and that's, that's what happens. <laughs> <laughs> that's so precious! Oh, I love it. <laughs> It's kind of uh, hard to watch the first two movies because they're much worse actors as children. Like, yeah, they're, they're kids. Not, as children actors go, they're not the worst ever. Mm. But, like, no. having seen them act as adults, it's like, man, yeah. this acting's way worse. <laughs> yeah. It's they're charming in their own way, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're not horrible. But, they're better you know, than, I... Uh, I don't know, Stranger Things. <laughs> really? Listen. No, I'm just joking. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get some hate mail. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, dang. I've got some pins. <laughs> <laughs> I watched a small little clip of Stranger Things. Like I didn't look for mm -hmm. it, I just saw it. And mm -hmm. it was uh, I, maybe the first episode, I have no idea. It was this scene where I think in the high school gym and this girl was like, why don't you like me? Why don't you like me? And the boy was like, we already have everybody in our party. We have the mage and the road. I'm like, what the <laughs> right. fuck is this thing? What is That's this show? season two. It's funny it. you mention that. So, so there's kind of like an undergoing, like a D and D theme. Vaguely, it's bigger in the first season. Yeah. Um, but I actually had a coworker who's like, "Hey, J hey, I can, I can see why you like D and D now. I watch all Stranger Things, and I can uh, see why you like D and D." I'm like, "But they don't. I, I mean, they mention the words D and D, but you don't right. really know what it's like to play D and D from watching the show." Yeah, it is. 
It is this weird. In my head. Yeah, it is weird Real that like cool. like I'm I'm very glad that tabletop has become way more mainstream and way more popular. But as someone who grew up having to actually like not tell people I did it because when right. I started playing it, it was my still... parents thought it was satanic. Yeah, I luckily didn't have that, <laughs> but it was more of we thought our church still kind of had opinions about it, and so like because we did it as a family, but we didn't tell anybody. Oh, that's cool. So I can't was... imagine playing with my parents. That'd be interesting. <laughs> my my mom is pretty pretty fun with those kinds of things. She doesn't really play much anymore just because she can't really make the time for. It. But originally it was my brother was the GM and it was my mom and I. We each had two characters, so we had a party of four. Um, and then he started getting more of his friends into it, then I'll work there. But I mean, I remember one of my close friends who had come up to me when I was little and was like, I know you. what you guys play D&D. Are you okay? Like, she was, like, legit concerned about me. <laughs> oh, no. So it's really weird now to go from, like, that to all of a sudden, whoop. <laughs> like, I'm right. glad. Right, the people making full-time jobs out of recording themselves yeah. playing D&D. Oh, my gosh, it's so weird. Uh, there is a there is a bit of a hipster part of me with certain people that now, like, think it's cool, and I'm just like, okay. But, you know, uh, it's for everyone. I'm happy about it. Yeah. I know. There is, like, a little <laughs> bit of it. A little bit of it. But that's just Are you that's being just a Sarah gatekeeper, Pete. Sarah. I know, right? Like, exactly. <laughs> Such a gatekeeper, guys. No one could play unless you liked it when you D- were little. The idea is satanic. It's really funny. Yeah. To yeah. be no, fair, no, there no, are like funny. demons and shit. At least it's not like oh, yeah. Yeah. people coming out saying Pokemon is the satanic. Which right. The Pope said right. that, right? At one point, people. I believe the I Pope remember. said it. Probably. Yeah. Probably. I think the Vatican. I don't know. Yeah. Pretty sure. The Pope um, is, like, a filter of, like, 50% of things he says that's cool and then not cool, so. <laughs> so, since board games and tabletop gaming is more mainstream now. Yes. Do you, do you think eventually it will be less misogynistic or no? d and Is it getting actually, less and less? I feel like it has I been. I actually feel like in some ways tabletop... Depends on the players. It depends. Okay, yeah, definitely depends on the players. But I feel like as a... um. Because oh, more like uh, guess, because Warhammer has a, a reputation of being really sexist yes. and misogynistic, right? Yeah, Warhammer would, does. Yeah, I don't know about Warhammer, but it, you. Would I mean, know fantasy be, art in general mm. probably yeah. is pretty sexist. Yeah. Oh, you're talking about the, would, the art as as yeah yeah just mm-hmm. like source yeah art mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. OC yeah. type stuff mm. always yeah, pretty that's true. pretty sexist. That's true. I would say as like a a, a culture, I guess if you call it that, I have personally found uh, tabletop to be less sexist than like most, video games? like in the video game. Yeah, mm. I have personally. Um, I'm sure it's not perfect, and it really depends on your group. But just overall, like just even when you look at like the comments and the Facebook groups, I have found more people being. I found fewer like misogynists and and stuff like that and problems with the tabletop groups than I have with video games. And one thing I found intri- find pretty interesting is I have found it's not perfect, but I found overall tabletop tends to also be more trans friendly. Or at the very least, mm. there are a lot of uh, I have a, I have quite a every trans friend I know is into D anD D. So, which I think which makes Role sense playing. actually if you think yeah. about yeah. it. But it is it is interesting. But they yeah, and so want. yeah, exactly. There's no repercussions. And so I have found overall that tabletop has gotten better at being more welcoming than um, uh, video games. I'm not sure why. I think maybe it just is the people who kind of got into it and I then you also, make those social groups. Do you think video games is uh, less barrier of entry compared to like pen and paper RPG? Um, I guess that's a good point. I'm not sure. Yeah. I think You have to have it, friends to do pen and paper. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the thing. And so if you got a yeah, good coordinate. group of friends, then they're probably going to support you. While I think with video games, it's more it's more easier you to be You can play an online game yourself and find a guild or whatever. Yeah, exactly. So it just, yeah, I don't know. I think also there's just something to be said about who's creating these games. So not, I would actually say there's quite a few uh, video game companies that are trying to combat, you know, like misogyny and stuff like that. Like Xbox has been trying a little bit and other kinds of MMOs. Mm. But overall, I mean, they went to reduce the all the mum fucking. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, I don't know. I just have personally found more, um, have had an easier time with being like, yeah, I'm a girl who plays D&D than being like, I'm a girl who plays this kind of game. Certain games, of course, I don't have trouble with being like, I'm a girl who likes visual novels. That's acceptable. <laughs> I feel like it's, um, I, I don't know why I think this, but I feel like when a girl says I'm a gamer, a video gamer, there's more, like, it's more likely for somebody to express a doubt at that mm. than yes. if she says she plays D&D. That is very true, and mm. I have definitely gotten that. Um, I don't think I've ever been questioned if I say I play tabletop, and in fact, I usually get 
unwarranted interest. Um, <laughs> <but> <laughs> I would say, but yeah, no, I, I think it. <laughs> oh boy, but no, I think no, it's true, and I think that's just because like video games are still more mainstream, and there's this still that weird belief that so many girls are fake gamers. Which I'm sure there were a few that did that. I don't know who's this majority that some guys think exist, or it's just a bunch of fake girl gamers. But I think it's easier to like have guys think that that's fake. Well, if you say you know, oh yeah, I play D and D, that's that's still almost seen as niche. <laughs> so mm. they're more likely to believe you. To be fair, if I'm a fairly attractive female, and I want to make a bunch of money, I'll probably be like a Twitch cam girl or whatever. <laughs> Seems like I an feel easy like way. People, I feel like there's a lot of fake gamers on Twitch, but I'm not gender specific. I'm just saying people who game only for money. I don't know if you're really a gamer. Mm. Like if you don't like True. games, and this is, I just make money doing this. It's the this? same like, know, way man. when people say I'm a gamer and then they just play Call of Duty and Madden. Yeah. If you only yeah. play one game, are you a gamer? Do we, we have a whole episode on this? I feel like we yeah, did. pretty sure. It's, I think we do this every year. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> We should actually. That'd be an interesting point to revisit the same topics topics every year to see if our opinions have changed. <laughs> I I think it'd be especially fun if you do some of your older ones when I wasn't in them. <laughs> to be fair, I'm not saying yeah, to be a new opinion. Just to be clear, I'm not saying all the females on Twitch are fake or whatever. Right, 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 I'm right, just right. saying no, no, I, know. I would take advantage yeah. of the dumbest there motherfucking zero, boys zero. out there to give me money because they're Listen, so dumb and it's so are, easy. You are not the first guy and you're not the last guy to it's suggest so to me, Sarah. Why don't you go on Twitch and just show off your feminine? assets listen <laughs> i'm gonna take the same answer i have a lot more self-respect take, take advantage of the dumbest just... boys <laughs> i i do that in online games i make girl character and i just pretend i'm a girl and i get a bunch of stuff <laughs> there's a bunch of people who do that i find that so funny it is it's really funny uh, i still remember oh my gosh this was forever ago so i used to play this online mmo that nobody knows called dark ages and it wasn't bad it was a, i was 16-bit Camelot. graphics and it uh, no, it wasn't really Camelot. It was in kind of a Celtic-inspired uh, setting. It had its own kind of religion and stuff like that. It was pretty cool. You had your basic classes and stuff. Um, and the art demonic. was six. Yeah, the art was like sixteen-bit um, art style. So it was all kind of. Oh uh, yeah, 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 like yeah. That. Yeah. You told us this so, before. So so funny. So funny story. I I'm just as my ca- so there in the beginning when this game kind of first came out, only really like hardcore like role players really got on. Like you. Your username had to be a name. It couldn't just be a username and stuff like that. They were very With strict on that. And crap. Uh, like no numbers and, and then, stuff. It, yeah, exactly. They even like changed certain language. So if you typed an LVL, it auto-corrected to like insight rank because that's what they called levels. It was really <laughs> intense. Anyway, so, but there was a time when like it got an influx of just kind of people who didn't care about those rules. So it was hard to upkeep those, those kinds of rules, especially with the username and stuff like that. So there's one time, you know, I'm walking around and I had, I was like an eighth grader and I had this whole weird situation where like a character who I would do raids with and stuff suddenly developed a crush on me. But the weirdest thing by far that happened and the funniest thing by far was somebody, um, you know, talked out loud to me and said, hey, you know, hey, miss. And I went, Yeah. And I'm waiting there for a few seconds for him to respond. And they just go, you're really hot. And I looked at him and I went, I'm a 16-bit character. And then I walked away. <laughs> How old is 8th grade, by I... the way? Huh? How old is 8th grade? It's 8th grade. Uh, eighth so 13-ish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was 13. I think I was yeah. 14 at the time. Yeah. I even was... had bad experiences raiding with my friend's girlfriend. Um... Like, she was like, oh, someone just PM'd me asking if, like, I was her boyfriend. Like, they assume uh, that a girl gamer can't game on her own. Yeah, that's a big, that's a big problem I found. I'm not, I'm not much an MMO, so it hasn't usually been an issue. But as someone who used to play Magic, <laughs> and unfortunately did play with her brother and boyfriend at the time. <laughs> that was, that was fun. That's probably the most annoying part. <clears throat> But yeah, overall with D&D, I haven't, like, t- like being a tabletop player, hmm. if anything, I just get a lot of guys that are way too interested. <laughs> You're going to a con next week. I am. I'm going to AlmaCon next week, which is a convention that I used to help run um, back when I was still in college. Uh, so it's in Alma, Michigan. Tiny, tiny little convention. Um, we're getting a few <laughs> cool guests. The main guest voice we're getting actors? that you guys... We are getting some voice actors. Um, we're also getting Pro Jared. Huh. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so that's cool. Is he having um, like a, a panel? 
I think he is. Yeah, I haven't looked at the schedule yet. I may even be his guest handler. We'll see. Um, I, I'm doing guest handling again this year. Uh, I don't know who I'm guest handling, but yeah, we have a few voice actors. Um, we do have... Hold up. I'm going to look it up right now who we have because I know I saw it somewhere. Actually, this would probably be faster if I just did it this way. Are you going as the triple uh, nine character again? Nine, I'm nine, not nine. sure. I don't have the hair right now because, well, I, well, actually, my hair's gotten less red, so I might be able to do... Um, Why don't you go I as an be... Ace Attorney character? I used to go as Emma Sky. Um, mm. That was my first cosplay ever was Emma Sky. Yeah, I had. Um, I just haven't fixed it up. And uh, You should it get was... like a... Go as Maya or something. Oh my gosh, yeah. That would be cute. I'd have to get a wig is the only thing. Mm. So, yep, we're getting Pro Jared... Oh, no, I thought we had more... Ah, oh, they haven't updated the website. Of course not. Oh, no, that's because it's the Tumblr one. No one looks at the Tumblr one. I want the website. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Um, for some reason, there the Emlicon website is, like, not on the first... Do we not have any more? Oh, well, okay. Let's go on the Facebook page and see if I can find the freaking pictures. Because I know we're getting some people. Um... Da -da 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 We've got Colleen O'Shaughnessy. Um, Oh, she's from my hometown. She's done a bunch of little voice acting stuff. I'm not sure she's done anything. She was in Digimon. Uh, she, it looks like she was a lot of just small characters. <clears throat> Christopher Bevins. He was... What's any, what's something he's in that... Uh, Johnny Gill and DeGray Man. Uh, Hannah Mori and Princess Jellyfish. Um, and apparently you guys are also having a Fire Emblem character cafe. Yes, we are. That's ah, a new thing. cool. So that'll be fun. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. We're getting Josh Grell, which is going to be great. So that'll be fun. Uh, he's been on a lot of stuff. He's Tyrion and Ruby. He was, um, that's right, he was Zen and Snow in the Red Hair. Uh, he was. He's also in, um, oh, geez, what's that super famous gay ice rink anime that everybody loves? Gay ice rink? <laughs> Yuri on Ice. Know. He's Yuri <laughs> from Yuri on Ice. <laughs> So yeah, so we got some good people. I don't know who I'm guest handling, but you guys will find out uh, in two weeks. <laughs> It'll be fun. But yeah, so it should be a Is good this, time. Uh, what's the theme for the con? Just general internet, Comic-Con, nerdery? Um, or it is, I some? would say anime is usually the main focus, but they've been okay. kind of, they still kind of branch out to video games and they're trying to branch out more into like YouTube stuff and such like that. Um, We've had a, mm. our first YouTube. Um, yeah, uh, I guess. Yeah. So it's a, yeah. it's a bit more focused on anime, but we've kind of... I guess all the comes the same way. Like, uh, there's a big one I go to called Fanime here in San Jose. Um, and we had, like, Nostalgia Critic last year. So it's the same kind of thing where it's not nice. well-defined. Yeah, exactly. We've had a, we've had kind of a, a variety. We usually get voice actors, but we also... We had Nostalgia Critic yeah, one year. Most... We used to get Little Karibo for a few years before he kind of stopped. <laughs> um, yeah, we had Little... Little Karibo's awesome. But we had a... we He uh, basically couldn't come back just because he... He only would go to, like, super big cons, which made sense. Um, he likes coming to us. It's is just... uh, Nostalgia Critic still doing his thing? <clears throat> yeah. I think he still he is, produces yeah. content weekly, he, I think. He is his so... His channel is kind of bigger now. Yeah, he's so, uh, so adorably awkward in person. <laughs> like, <laughs> he talks way too fast, and he's always, like, on edge and nervous. It's amazing. <laughs> he's super adorable. I think he may have filmed something while he was at Elmacon um, with uh, Lil Karibo. Or he had an idea for does. something. Oh, what con? I know he. I always see footage from him at. Uh, I think it's not Magfest. It's something in Chicago. I don't know which one it is. Since we're kind of talking about YouTubers, can I mention something? Yeah, of course. I suppose. Was that motherfucker with this uh, body that uh, the dead body in the video again? Paul Logan, oh, Logan, Logan, Paul, Jake Paul, something first name, first name. Wolverine. Yeah, yeah. Wolverine suffer, bro, dude. Wasn't it Logan? Yeah, yeah Logan yep. Paul. Okay. Logan, yeah, Wolverine, Logan, yeah, suffer, suffer, bro. He, he went on to Good Morning right. America and was interviewed oh, by was, Michael yeah. Strahan, the uh, former defensive player from the New York Giants. I think so. I don't know who he is. Michael Strahan, the guy with the gap in the teeth. So, <laughs> um, he has a really good PR team because he made himself look like yeah. a victim. They fed him all the words. Yeah. <sighs> Because he I was basically to raise suicide awareness. Yeah, he was like, I thought I was just trying to do a good thing by raising awareness about suicide. 
something something and he was like Michael Strahan was like um how have you been handling the aftermath blah 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 or something like that and he was saying like people are telling me to go kill myself and all that and oh Michael Strahan gosh. said how do you feel about that something like that right and he said <laughs> I actually kind of think that I deserve it is what he said So he's like he's uh-huh. trying to be like no, yeah. give me all your pity. It. Feel oh, better. No, give okay. me all your pity. You. you can give me all your pity at patreon.com. You've had a real rough day. Oh my god. Or PayPal. Gosh, Pay- PayPal your pity to me please. $10 <laughs> minimum per pity. Can we go back to when um you know uh a better representation of <laughs> of YouTubers in in the uh, in news. I remember when um hmm. oh my gosh what's the, not Jimmy, was it Jimmy Kimmel or was it Jimmy? Ah, oh shoot, what's another Jimmy what's the other, Savile? Jimmy, no, it's Jimmy Kimmel. It's the Jimmy Kimmel show. I'm pretty sure. And he made Jimmy Kimmel had a thing where he made fun of Let's Play because he yeah. thought they were dumb. Yeah. And so oh, yeah, Markiplier and that one and another girl who Beautiful. I remember, that was so was it Peter? Yeah. Oh, Markiplier. No, no, no it was it wasn't Markiplier Peter and the other guy. They they contacted him. Were like, hey. They're actually cooler than you think, and the main the thing that kind of that kind of sucked was Jimmy Kimmel was like, yeah, so I got all these death threats from people, and so like Mark and the other yeah. later like, y- yeah, you know, and in my head I'm thinking you've probably gotten death threats for a lot of different things you said, Jimmy Kimmel, <laughs> <laughs> but whatever. And so of course they're trying to like <laughs> teach <laughs> teach him the whole things. It was very it was kind of funny but extremely awkward the entire time because he well, was trying to find bond super close. Yeah, it's just... you saved my life, Markiplier. Yeah. With you. Yeah, I was in a that. dark place and you saved me. Yeah. And now well, you're the savior. <laughs> what I'm saying is that that was at least Sorry. a better representation than stupid Logan. That's all I gotta yes, say. Yes, that's mm. true. I, I generally like Markiplier, actually. I do too. I, I think do it's, too. I stopped subscribing to his contents became what I didn't care for, but I still think he's a pretty nice guy, probably. That's better than PewDiePie. Much. Listen. He definitely seems better than PewDiePie. Yeah, I mean, yeah. He seems yeah. more deserving of life than PewDiePie. <laughs> 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 if we Yikes. weigh two souls, the worthy one. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So yeah, Logan Paul is the victim. So uh, if of you want to help him, you can give him money through PayPal. <laughs> Probably did he actually ask for money. He didn't actually ask for money, did he? No, no, no. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh! I mean, <laughs> Just I making sure. I mean, but if I'm not mistaken, be, I think off air when he was crying, he did wipe his tears with like a wad of cash. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that's probably true. So. Oh my gosh! He probably has a fireplace that he uses cash as fuel. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Oh yeah. my gosh! Actually, it's like YouTubers prey on the same kind of people that I prey on when I play online games. It's just people, or it's just said. people that want to have like some kind of connection, right? Uh, mm. Yes, mm. yes, I, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's that's why I enjoy watching this place as well because I was very lonely at the time. Mm. Before Lady Hamlet came in weird, and saved your life. Asymmetrical. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know how we both went, ooh. <laughs> Listen, we're just happy for your happiness. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm particularly. That's another thing. I think there's a subreddit called R Happy. It's of all these smug bastards just <laughs> grinning all over. Look at me. I'm so happy. It's like, okay, we're happy. There's an R Happy? Keep it to yourself. Yeah, it's for these really <laughs> boastful people. That's all it is. It's like, I don't want to say you shouldn't be happy, but you shouldn't be, like, super proud of your happiness, I guess. I don't know. Because it's I always the same know. person. Like, like a year ago, I was depressed. Now I'm happy. Like, good for you. Shut up. <laughs> see, I, see I'm, I'm more okay with those than, like, the FML things. I Those things get That's really That's absolutely annoying. true. It's, it's, a, it's way better than them fishing for compliments. Mm. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm so, so sad. I see. I can't take FML seriously well, at all because people, I guess. because um when you know when the whole FML site first came out, uh my first exposure to FML was through a um uh, a I keep hearing S- SNL. It's fuck my life, right? It's not SNL. Yeah, exactly. Right. Okay. FML. <laughs> right. okay. FML. Let me try Fox to Trump, be Mama enunciate Lima. better. <laughs> so um no, but there was a, a someone I knew worked for like a a parody newspaper, a satire newspaper for their their college, and they were like, hey, look at this. And what it was on the back was um F, it was uh just the quotes from like they just made up quotes from people from who were suffering from horrible things like whether they're suffering from poverty they made up usually quotes? from like third world countries they were just kind of you know hashtag fml and at the time i was like oh, i don't get I why see. these are funny 
And it's because I had yeah. never heard of it before. So now because I've seen that, I can't... Then when I learned what it actually was, I can't take it seriously anymore. <laughs> I'm like, oh, these are just people complaining about little problems. Oh, great. <laughs> First, problems. First world problems. So. My life as average was way better. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, want to get into take some back, news? Take it back now. Yeah, let's get... <laughs> let's reel it back. Take it news. back. Get into some news. <laughs> Um, Far Cry 5 is still about killing white Americans So that's cool uh, okay. They came out with a new story trailer And it's about how the guy The leader of the religious cult Believes that uh, God chose him Yada 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 So not too far from real <laughs> life um, <laughs> But also uh, They came out with details About the season pass Which oh. is really cool Because the season pass will come with Three DLCs Three expansion DLCs And it has nothing to do with Montana at all The first <laughs> DLC will be in Vietnam Oh. Second hmm. DLC will be a B-movie zombie thing okay. And the third DLC will You'll be in Mars fighting aliens That is That's very awesome. ambitious Yeah <laughs> That is cool. Okay. I hope all. That sounds like I hope a all three for asset recycling. Yeah, I hope all three yeah. is a similar quality to like Far Cry Three Blood Dragon. Hopefully. Yeah, I mean that's the kind of DLC that I can appreciate. Yeah, it's probably a lot of reskins, but I mean whatever. People will buy and people will play it, and it'll yeah. be fun. But like that's the kind of DLC I can appreciate. It sounds still. It sounds pretty ambitious of them, but too yeah, I'm good sure. to be true. Yep. A little too good to be true. <laughs> it sounds like what we would expect DLCs to be like. <laughs> Uh, also, if you get a season pass, you will get Far Cry 3. So that's pretty cool. That is pretty nice. But I'm not sure if okay. PC will get Far Cry 3, but I know PS4 and Xbox One will get Far Cry 3 if you get a season pass. So yeah, that is cool. So Far Cry 5 will be coming on uh, 27th March. So yeah, I am probably going to pre-order it with the Ooh. DLC. Sorry. Oh my goodness. Oh man, oh man. Because I'm Don't afraid that digital you. copies will run out and yada yada yada. <laughs> so, <laughs> Do you even get anything? Sorry? Do you get anything for pre-order? Like normal like pre-order bonus. Now and you get a like, shiny Like normal gun. bonus in-game items and yada yada yada. But, <laughs> okay. but whatever. Um, did, we, did we talk about Nintendo Labo at all? I don't think we did. Yeah, I don't think... Yeah, I think we forgot to bring it up. But whatever. So you guys know about Nintendo Labo? I, I don't. Yes. So uh, Nintendo Labo is a game slash project thing by Nintendo for the Switch. You buy the game and it will come with a box with a bunch of cardboard. Oh, I distantly heard about this. Okay. So the cardboard, they will give you instructions on how to fold it and all that. So you can make different accessories for different games. So let's say you can make a fishing pole and you put in your different uh, Nintendo Switch thing, the the controllers, and it will use all the uh, fancy gimmicks in the controllers to like, you know. So there's like a robot game. There's a building your own house kind of game. There's a fishing game. There's a few bunch of these things. And they they were also I believe they were also release the schematics to make your own cardboard if you want, so which is cool. People might create. People might create it from things that last longer than the cardboard, probably. Right. Three D printing yeah. maybe that would be cool. Yeah. Using like plastic and stuff. Um, so yeah, Nintendo Labo apparently will let you program your own custom robots. That's pretty awesome. It's supposed and to be I, very it's... educational, but no how. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I could see that. I'm also shocked that Nintendo is willing to release their assets, so... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because it would be fucking annoying. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's $70 to com- for the game and the cardboard. Imagine the cardboard mm. being destroyed because it will, because kids, will, and it's cardboard. Yeah. So imagine if you have to keep buying like $30, $40 worth of fucking cardboard every time. Oh my gosh. Jesus. I'm just when glad they when didn't I saw this news, I was just thinking, oh, uh, yeah, Nintendo's just going to sell cardboard and everybody's going to buy that shit. <laughs> Without <laughs> complaining. The, that, was the, that, was the, that was the meeting that they had. They're like, what's the cheapest thing we could still get away with people buying, like, willing to pay tons of money for? <laughs> Should we try cardboard? Are you insane? It's a brilliant idea. <laughs> yeah, and Nintendo can sell air and people will buy it. 
people will buy it. Nintendo branded Air. Who do you Air. think can sell Air better, Nintendo or Apple? Nintendo. Like, mm. I right or now? Apple. Okay. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Nair. <laughs> Nintendo <laughs> might come up with a funny way to use it. Yeah. Unlike Nintendo Apple. Nintendo will be more Nintendo will be more creative with it, but Apple will will just slap the brand on it, 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 it and it will only it will only last air. for two minutes. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it'll be it'll be worse than Air, but it'll be uh, more exclusive <laughs> or something. Mm. Yeah, it'll be special Air and only last for two minutes. Like we took out the headphone jack on this Air. <laughs> 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 so um, it will come with a feature called ToyCon Garage that lets you use rudimentary programming to build and customize your own cardboard robots. Nintendo announced today, which was yesterday. Some of the custom toys <laughs> Nintendo showed off include an electric guitar and a basic game of electronic tennis. Pretty cool. Indeed. Uh, they're essentially if-then statements using simple building blocks to let you program your uh, devices. Okay. Okay. So that's pretty cool. I mean, if it teaches kids, right... Basic yeah. Boolean logic, yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, exactly. I mean, nowadays they're. I mean, that's kind of the thing nowadays is you want to teach kids programming. It's almost yeah. become. It's almost it's become like all a language the rage. that, that yeah. you should be te- that we should learn. Yeah, I'm the especially old- in this area. Yeah. Um. Oh. Uh, I saw an article on Kotaku about Final Fantasy XII's PC part. Uh, mm-hmm. What they're saying is, it's a really good PC part, and out of the box, you can use your PlayStation 4 controller. It will work like directly out of the box without any tinkering, which is cool. There's a comment yeah. <laughs> saying he was using his PS4 controller to play the Final Fantasy XII on PC, but his PlayStation 4 was still on. So all the button prompts that he put in, he eventually got onto the PlayStation Store and put in like $270 or some shit worth of... <laughs> I'm not what? sure how true it is. But it's pretty funny. Yeah, that is so funny. terrible, but really funny. Oh my gosh, I never even thought about. I want to say issue. it's fake, but if it's yeah. true, it's funny. That exactly. If it's true, <laughs> I'm so sorry for your loss. Is it more true if it's funny? <laughs> what? Is it, is it more, more true, true if it's funny? <laughs> it's funny? <laughs> sorry, ha <laughs> ha. You heard me. You heard me. <laughs> yeah, it's the, it it's the inside truth. It's your own personal truth. That's what really matters. Um, so. Let's my last piece of news. Uh, let's end it on a high note. Yeah. The uh, Counter Strike co-creator. Anybody know about this? <laughs> high note. Uh, tell me. I don't think I do. <laughs> Please tell me. I'll be the. I'll be the first reaction. <laughs> the Counter Strike co-creator, <laughs> Jess Cliff, is arrested for sexual ex- exploitation of a child. Oh, that's not funny at all. Uh, no. He was booked early Thursday for sexual exploitation of a child. Police police did not immediately release details. He is not charged with a crime yet. Uh, police have not said if an actual well, child he's been has released. been harmed. Uh, Cliff does not have a criminal history. Hmm. Uh, he was booked at 1.17am into King County Jail. He is expected to have bail hearing Friday afternoon. Uh, yada, 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 yada. He was arrested in Seattle. Uh, Wait, he's not... So no He's, details released yet, basically. Okay. okay. Well, that's just sad. That ain't funny at all. Um, I'm yep. not sure what is the sexual exploitation, but the end of the article said, Cliff, who lives in West Seattle and works in Bellevue, graduated from Virginia Tech with a degree in management science, and he's also an amateur photographer. So it could be that. Oh, like, no. Could be that. So yeah. no details science. yet. So uh, Valve has suspended him for now until more details come. Uh, he has done level design for Half-Life 2, Team Fortress 2, Left 4 Dead 2, and portal a lot of 2s. Portal 2. And he is the original co-creator with another guy for the uh, Counter-Strike mod for Half-Life. So yeah. Did you hear the other Counter-Strike story about that guy who bought a skin? So I guess they made a skin for this gun that was like signed by some tournament winner. I'm not sure how that works. But he spent sixty two thousand dollars on it. Jesus. On a skin for a gun. gun How much and again? A video game. Sixty two thousand US dollars for a skin. For a skin. Of a gun. Of a one gun, a specific gun. In a video game. In a video game, one of a I'm kind. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I must have missed something. How? Why did he spend that much? Like, what was it? Co- did it cost that much? Like, what? I mean, it's Why? not something that anybody can buy for that much money. It was like a, I don't know, I don't, I don't know what the context was for it being created, but it was like some tournament winner 
put like a, it's like a skin with his emblem on it or something like that. Mm. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> 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 okay. A lot of money. Counter wow. Strike, you can create your own skins, right? I don't know. I have no idea. I never played it. You know, I would be mad at the fact that you have to pay money for skins, except for the fact that it doesn't really bother me or hurt anyone, except that people are just dumb enough to pay that much money for them. I really can't be mad about that microtransaction. It's not the skin's fault. It's really not. It's the children who are wrong. <laughs> the skin's fault. <laughs> like, like, there are a lot of things I can get really mad at for microtransactions, and especially the gambling aspect of it, but I've never been mad about the, the skins. But I am amazed at how many people will just pay that much money for skins. It really does astound me. Yep. But you know what? Good job, capitalism. You did it. <laughs> <laughs> the system is working, I guess. I the system know. is working, I guess. You know, this mm. is the way, I mean, to be fair, this is the way the system was made to be, made yeah. to work for luxury things, not for neat, necessary things. So I can't even get mad. <laughs> I just... Yeah. The skins ain't gonna make you better at the game, so it's not yeah, necessary. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. But you they'll wanna... make you feel better than other people. Yeah. Those plebeians with their naked guns that just killed you, they didn't really win. <laughs> they didn't really win. <laughs> they didn't win the real cool. battle. <laughs> to be fair, if you if you can afford $62,000 on a skin for a gun in a video game, I think you've won at life. I, I hope mean... his name's like Moneybags or something like that. <laughs> He's still Moneybags. Oh my gosh. Reminds um, me of uh, someone made an app a long time ago that just uh, that cost like I like cost like you know a thousand dollars or something yeah. or whatever or maybe it was even a million dollars I don't know and all it was was a button that just said I am filthy rich or something it was a thousand I think yeah and so of course you know like two people bought it and that app guy was like great <laughs> also um, regarding that Counter Strike uh, pedophile guy um, um, yeah. I don't want to say he looks like a pedophile because anybody can be a pedophile, <laughs> but he kind of looks like a pedophile. Does he have a mustache? Mustache. <laughs> <laughs> he just he just is looks he like must- one man. I don't is, know. And he's is he the mustache? He's white and he's got like a really round face. <laughs> mm, okay. Uh, wears glasses and he looks like a creepy yeah, yeah. uncle. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. I've had creepy, creepy uncles uncle. and they kind of have a look. Yeah. You just kind of know. Did you see the? Did you see? There's a documentary posted on our documentary today about the yakuza, and it kind of features this old guy like trying to do push-ups and he can't. <laughs> it's, like, it's the what? weirdest thing. He's like, I am what? strong in the yakuza. And he's like doing push-ups and he's like, no, that's not, those aren't push-ups. Oh my gosh! What? It's, this is interesting. It's weird. Like oh. it, it's kind of funny because reading the comments on that post, um, some people were claiming. It was a documentary made by the Yakuza to make them seem like the victims or something like that. Like, because what? I guess, like, like, is so absolute, like, being Yakuza is the only way to, like, express your freedom. I don't know. I don't know. It was, you know, some propaganda thing. It was, it was a weird documentary. I didn't watch the whole thing. Basically, I just watched the guy try to do push-ups because somebody linked that timestamp in the, in the uh, specific video. We have gotten on weird topics over here. <laughs> well, I, he reminded me of a crazy uncle guy. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you guys uh, a, a bunch of weird uncles oh what did you guys have I'm gonna die what do you got <laughs> you're gonna die I have <laughs> uh, you know how when a YouTuber hits uh, 100,000 and 1 million subscribers they can get like a plaque or yeah, the play, an award the silver type and thing? the gold play button yes well apparently um, it's kind of up to YouTube if you get it or not and they're not really being clear on how they decide. Because there are people who have 100,000 and they're not getting the thing. And there are people who do and they are getting the thing. You have to like submit your name. Like, hey, can I get this award thing? And they'll be like, yes or no. And we don't really know why. <laughs> okay. They say okay. like, we'll only give the award to people who um, are like, you know, upstanding members of the community or something. I don't, it's, it just seems, it seems super arbitrary and random. That's, a, that's, that's one of my news story. Uh, other news story, uh, Kaz Hirai, I don't know his mm. name. Uh, the Sony CEO? Sony's CEO stepped oh. down, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's weird. I, and I think they're going to name the CFO, right? As his Probably. replacement. Is there a reason he stepped down? I don't remember. Uh, let's see. He stepped on in April. That's a long time ago. This, this story is bad. Why, 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 why did this story <laughs> in my news feed? Oh, jeez. I saw this too, actually. 
I think it's because they are they recently announced that the CFO is going to be replacing him. Oh, maybe. Or maybe he sense. announced that he's <clears throat> stepping down and now is really close to the day that he's going to step this, down, maybe. I'm looking at a Polygon story and it's talking about a fake Twitter account of his. It's not his account. It's a fake version of him Twitter account. That's uh, supposed to be really funny. Yeah, it is really funny. It is. I wonder if they're going to retire that account that he's no longer the Sunny CEO. Here's in a tweet. Kendrick pushed his album back a week because he was scared. He knew he couldn't drop an album the same week as Parappa returned to the game. <laughs> Which I love. That's a good tweet. Um, and then the last story I had is a non-story kind of. Um, uh, the creator of Diablo, David Brevik, has by himself made another video game called It Lurks Below. Which um, uh, is a lot like Terraria, but heavier on the RPG. Less on the sandbox. Mm. Okay. Hmm. Mm. All right. So your goal is to just fight your way down to get better gear and oh, that kind of stuff. Oh, got it, got it, got it. Okay. It looks below. So it looks kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if it has multiplayer or not because one of the things I it didn't like Terraria, like Terraria was the right? lack of... It looks a lot like Terraria, and he admits it. Like, it's not, like, a secret, I guess. But um, it looks cool because I, I wished Terraria had more structure, I guess, to it. More... Like, I felt like I was exploring, but I didn't really get a lot out of exploring for the most part um so hopefully this has more of that but i don't know that this is going to have multiplayer he's been working on this game for 25 years hmm. I don't know, if there's no multiplayer i'm not interested but that's me those are my stories so mine was different than all of y'all's okay uh, mine's, mine's mine's good news so um uh silicon or yeah, it is, I, I think it's good news. I think Cheryl will be happy. <laughs> so Silicon Rod did a, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, did an article about the 3DS and uh, details about what to do with the 3DS. And apparently um, they are still, they are planning to continue uh, creating uh, basically the next kind of 3DS, uh, the 3DS family as they call it, um, even what? alongside with the Switch. What? So, How does yeah. that work? Mm. So they, they feel that they are uh, different enough um, that they are going to be continuing with the 3DS business separately and in parallel with the Switch. So huh. we'll see how that works. Um, the main reason that they kind of um, are thinking about this is because they actually kind of feel like the 3DS is a a better kind of for like a family system, especially for younger kids, and it's better for hmm. those who are new to video games and also better for those who are more budget-conscious consumers. Mm. So... It's all, so that is kind so and also they feel like it's different different enough of a system family of systems that they feel comfortable moving ahead and uh you know going is still still creating for the 3ds uh, families so we'll probably get a new kind of 3ds or something whatever they're thinking of at some point I don't know what it's gonna be obviously but they have not uh they're not going to discontinue that line of products um how much was the uh, 3ds when it came out 300 oh 250. Gosh. I think three hundred or something like that. I think yeah. you're in the right ballpark. Yeah. So it was about the Switch's price, right? Switch is three hundred. Two ninety nine. I don't know how much the Switch is. How much is the Switch? Buy a Switch. Both of you have one. <laughs> I know, but I but didn't mine buy was it a myself. Gift. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You should. You should um, have asked I your spent your zero gifter dollars. right in the eyes how much was uh, it. Uh yeah, three hundred. <laughs> Let me see what the Nintendo 3DS was. I don't remember when it, how much it was on launch. Um, ooh, that's a really cool looking one. I want that one. Anyway, <laughs> uh, the ones I'm seeing are more like 200, but I don't remember what it was on launch. Price on launch. <laughs> 250-ish. Mm, yeah, 250. Yeah. 250. So... Take that as you will. Yeah. The And to be fair, what could be happening, they didn't say this in the article, but I wouldn't be surprised if they decided to go away from the 3DS and more to like the 2DS kind of thing. Because the 2DS was basically created for um, for kids. Because um, it came out at the same time as Pokemon did, so that's why it sold really well. Because it was safer and um, more hardier <laughs> than the 3DS, which you could easily break if you were a kid. Do you think... So I, it will fuck up their Switch sales if they came out with a Switch that can only be played as portable. Hmm. I don't know why they would do that. Hmm. Wouldn't that take away the whole point of the Switch? Exactly. So, yeah. are they going to make another Pokemon game for this handheld? 
slash I don't know. really handheld maybe and not really a hybrid? Maybe it'll be for both? I don't know. Hmm. It's hard because, I mean, the Switch was kind of a weird, you know, form of, like, both handheld and not, but it was still kind of in the same vein as the Wii. And the 3DS is, so I don't know what they're going to do. <clears throat> Excuse me. But uh, they're still continuing the 3DSs, and uh, we'll see what they come up with next. It might be that they try to turn the 3DS into more for kids, and the others more going to be more for, you know, more the adult games. Especially since we know that Phoenix Wright, they're creating a new one for the Switch. But I also don't know when this was found out. <laughs> so, they, they kind of, there's a bunch of graphs on this article showing basically how the 3DS did really well when, during um, certain sales for games. And so I think that's their kind of whole idea is as long as we have good content for the next version of the 3DS, then there is no reason why we wouldn't create the next generation of 3DSs or whatever it's going to be called. So, we'll see. Yep. That's my new story. <laughs> cool. That's interesting. They yeah. they're gonna they're gonna announce a cheaper switch after I buy the expensive one. Son of a exactly. bitch. Brilliant. Woo! So yeah. Anything else? That's all I got. Go please wrap up. I think so. Okay. Let's wrap up. Do the same thing as we already I'll do. start. Hi guys. You can find me as Sarah Scopic, S-A-R-A-H-S-C-O-P-I-C. I'm on YouTube, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter, and I'm on Twitch, and I will be this Sunday. Ah crap, Woo-hoo. I gotta prepare for that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, catch me then. Yeah. That's the Final Fantasy thing? Uh nope, I'm still on Life is Strange. <laughs> One more oh, okay, cool. One more episode though, I think. I watched you last week a little bit, but I didn't really follow it that well because I don't know um, my strange plot at all. (laughs) So it's like, ah, stuff's happening. (laughs) That's all right, yeah. I got to find a new game to play. (laughs) Yep, yep. Me too. Um, I'm on YouTube looking for new games to play uh, as Fohamner. I'm Pupuno everywhere. (laughs) Bye-bye. This has been episode 126. We will see you maybe not next week because somebody has a con. Right. Yada, yada, yada. I'm sorry, okay? <laughs> you can go without me if you want to. Whatever. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, we will see you when we see you. Thank you very yeah. much for watching and listening. Bye bye.